Hello friends, my name is RagePanda1 and we are back again with another exciting guide for a specific character and this time it is the crowd favorite of the female Ignis. She's beautiful, she's hot, and she do a lot of damage. So let's get straight into these abilities and see why she's so strong. Her passive skill, Burning Spirit, makes it so each normal attack or active skill inflicts one stack of burning on the target up to a total of 16 times. That's a lot of burning. Her Firestorm Ultimate casts an exploding fireball which bounces between enemy targets up to five times, each hit dealing damage equal to a percentage of the caster's strength, and if the enemy targets are inflicted with burning, the effect is consumed to deal extra damage. Each stack increases damage by 15%. So while the percentage looks kind of low on this ultimate, if you're used to reading through ultimate skills, that looks kind of low. There's two important parts here. It hits up to five times and it consumes burning stacks to do 15% extra damage. And as you may recall, just from this passive alone, we can stack up up to 16 times. So we're going to remember the wording of this ultimate and that's going to come into play later when we are talking about synergies. And then of course her active skill Flame Blast is a wildly underrated move. It sends a blast wave forward which moves along a straight line dealing damage equal to a percentage of the caster's strength to all enemies in its path and also has a 30% chance to inflict stunned for two seconds. It hits all enemies in its path and also has a 30% chance to stun. Meanwhile, it does crazy damage. It is no wonder that this is one of the top picks for almost everybody. She is absolutely absurdly good. Normally, I go straight into traits after talking about these skills, but while the skills are fresh in our mind, I wanna talk about the two kinds of teams that I think are really good with her. One of those teams is gonna be based on increasing her firestorm damage and having other people that increase their damage from burning. And the second team is going to be based on lining people up in a way where you're going to be able to hit the most possible people with Flame Blast. Because that stun is really good, and this, being her active skill, also adds a stack of burning, and the damage is quite good. So the more people that you can group up to hit at one time with that, the more damage you're going to be doing, not only with this skill, but also with your ultimate and the more stuns you're going to get off. So the first team that I think is really good for her is the Pyromancer team. And that is where we're going to put Pyromancer on everybody on the team, unless it just simply doesn't fit on their kit. And that's going to increase our burning damage. And since we're doing all of that, we're going to put our male Ignis on the team because his passive also scales his damage when people have burning. The male Karg is in his best position when he is on a team like this because one of the best things that he does is also inflict burning with an area of effect attack. In a scenario like this, he can be built to work as a tank for your team while also spreading a ton of burning. Also, if your fights go on, a lot of people don't know this about male Karg, he gets incredibly strong and does a ton of damage as the fight goes on. I think that probably will make him one of the better people for longer events. Everybody always only talks about the PvP aspect of the game, right? But if we're talking about the totality of the game, I think having a leveled up Karg is actually quite good for your account. And since the whole point of what we're doing on this Pyromancer team is we're building up stacks so that we can increase the strength of our ultimate, essentially, I also like to put male Aeson on this team because I'm using my female Ignis as the whole basis for why I'm building my team and making her stronger using his passive makes it so that each one of those percentage boosts that I'm getting is giving me more of a percent. So that's a team I really like, but realistically in the current meta, you would replace this Karg with a female Devala. Maybe you would put Pyromancer on her if you wanted to, although it's not absolutely essential. And you could also replace the male Ignis or the male Aeson with a male Tidestorm, which is going to let you line up your characters a little better to do damage to them. And that's going to bring me to my second 
type of team. This team is probably one of the most meta teams that you'll see me recommend on this channel, and when we're using it, we can still put Pyromancer on people to increase that damage, although that's not necessarily the whole thing that we're trying to do with our build. So if it doesn't fit on a character, you don't need to feel bad for not putting it on, or if you just don't have the companion, you'll be fine. But the important thing about what we're doing here is that we know that we have a line attack that we're trying to aim, and we are trying to position the rest of our team to enable that the best that we can. So the way that I'm going to try to do that here is I want this ASN to get pulled in, so my Tidestorm is going to be there. They have three melee characters that are going to come rushing in. If I put one of my frontliners in one... When I say frontliners, by the way, I mean people who are in melee combat meant to be tanking things and keeping people off of your backliners. I don't mean literally I put them in the front line. So I know that that's a little bit confusing for some people, but that's just the terminology I'm used to from a history of talking about strategy between video games and tabletop games. So... It's stuck in my head that way. That's the way I'm going to keep saying it because I, I just can't. So even though these two are going to be my frontliners, I have them both set back a little bit. And the reason that they're set back a little bit is so that hopefully she'll go running in towards the middle. That will draw in these two guys from the side. My Devala will come in also and draw them further into the side. And then hopefully my Tidestorm will pull yet another person into that group. And there's no guarantee that that's going to happen before her stun line attack goes off, but we're hoping for the best and we're trying to enable our team to do their jobs effectively. So the best laid plans, you know, they don't always go exactly as planned, but we have a very tight group of enemies there. We saw our stun go out. We're pretty happy with it. And now we're blasting people. Of course, I'm significantly higher power than this person, so it's not a crazy surprise that I am winning. And of course, their female Devala is going to live forever because the character is a problem and not super fun. Here we go. Friend of the channel, Snaga. We'll try against him. He's a little closer to our actual power. And I happen to know that his female Devala is a real B word. And... <laughs> I would love to put her in the ground. So we're going to be doing a similar strategy here, but we specifically want to engage this female Devala first. So we're going to be specifically engaging that side of the map. We know that the male White Eyes isn't going to come over and attack us anyway. So the best that we're going to get here realistically is a group of three that we're going to be sending our attack at. And we're just going to be happy with that because it's three people that we want to be taking damage pretty early in the game anyway. Not that this is a full positioning guide, but... You know, what are you going to do? You know, it's really weird that it tells you that somebody's power level is something and then you get into the match and they're considerably lower. It's said that he was like, I don't know, you'll have to check the tape. He was 5.5 .5 or 5.7 or something, I thought, pretty close to me. And then he was just 4 million when I went in there, so... Sorry, Snaga. <laughs> you took one for the team, and we appreciate you, Snags. Wow, we're big on the leaderboard. Level 8. So that sort of covers synergies and positioning, and I know that that's not normally how I go into it with these videos, but I just feel like she's a little bit of a special case. So for her traits, I know a lot of people want to see the traits that I have on mine. Mine is an epic, not very good. I did not invest heavily into this. I did get lucky marrying on a fierce and a brutal pretty early. And when I ended up getting the athletic, even though I was going for energetic, I was still under level 300. And at that point, it was very much worth keeping. At this point, it's definitely waning off and not quite as good. Although because she has all of the extra scaling from strength, she's getting even more from it than other people might. And I don't have things like the Doombringer or Tidestorm clan traits leveled up to put on there. So that being said, of course, Energetic and Brutal are essential. She's a damage character and the way the game is now with Vigor and Guardian Stones, Energetic and Brutal on every DPS character forever. I don't think there are any exceptions where you don't want to have that. And if you're getting rid of those in favor of other stuff, I think that you are going to have a worse character. There's obviously times where it's going to work out fine for you, but Vigor is kind of broken. If you get up to 60 and over in your Vigor levels, your character is just insane. 
and those percentages really add up. So when we see something like the normal attack stacking something up that's going to increase our ultimate damage, that tells us that we want Agile to be on our character. Anytime a normal attack is having a further effect for any reason on your character, you probably want Agile on them. You can think of the female White Eyes, for instance. She doesn't even do that much damage, but still having Agile on her so she can ult more and so she's getting her stacks, it's just better. So my recommendations are going to be pretty slim here. It's basically one recommendation of Energetic, Brutal, Agile. And for the last trait, you could go with either Fierce for just increased damage overall and better scaling, or you could go with Focused if you're the kind of person that wants your whole team ulting just as fast as they possibly can. This is a character that is absolutely a carry, so you don't want to put anything on her aside from energetic that isn't going to be giving her a ton of damage. That's just my opinion, and focus doesn't directly give you damage, but getting your ult more often, of course, gives you more damage. I do think, however, that the agile and focused build on this character is worse than it usually is. Now, Obviously, it can be very strong and it works very well for some people. I'm not telling you that you're terrible at the game if you, if you use that build. That's not what I'm saying. However, she wants to build up some stacks of burning before she ults. And the faster you get your ult, the less chance you have to build up those stacks. You're gaining ults, but you're getting weaker ults. We would have to do a whole lot of testing in numbers to see if that's actually got any value to it. But like I said, if that works for you and it makes you happy, you should do it. If anything I've said in this video has inspired you to try something new, or if it gave you the warm feel goods because I confirmed that you're doing a great job on your own, then go ahead and drop a like on the video and comment and say, hey man, you think cool things and I think them too and we're both cool together. And then everybody's gonna be happy and the world will be a better place over all. So I wanna thank you for watching this video. I have been Rage Panda one and I will see you in the next one.